Here we go. Hello, YouTube. Here we are looking at a, another graph. Well, actually, we don't have a graph. So let's read what's going on in this example. A ball is thrown in the air. The path of the ball is represented by the equation. There it is. Graph the equation over the interval 0 to 8 on the accompanying grid. All right. So if a ball is thrown in the air, it's going to follow the shape of a parabola, right? Yeah, right. When we graph parabolas, where do we start? Zero. We usually find the vertex, don't we? That's what I would do, right? When you go to graph these things, we're going to start at the vertex. Guys, you're, they gave you the equation right here. H equals negative T squared plus 8T. So H, I'm just going to rewrite it down here. Negative T squared plus 8T. How do I find the vertex of a parabola? Negative B over 2A, exactly. Negative B over 2A. What is B in this case? Eight. So I want negative eight over two times A would get me? Two. Negative, two. negative two. So my vertex will be at four comma. And then how do I figure out the next part? Plug it. Take four and plug it back in. So everybody take four and plug it back in. And let's see if we all end up with the same number. So don't tell people what your answer is. Just take four and plug it back into the equation. I was just going to say, would you mind? Thank you. Make it easier for us to see. Thanks. I love it. OK, everybody should have an answer. And I have a feeling that we have one of two different answers. One answer I'm wondering if people got is 48. Yeah. One answer I'm wondering if you got is 16. Yeah. Well, one's right and one's wrong. 16 it should be. If you got 48, it's, it's this same thing that you're messing up on. When you plug in four, this means do four squared and then take the opposite. This does not mean negative four squared. It means four squared, which is 16. Take the opposite, it's negative 16 plus 32. That's how I'm ending up at a positive 16, okay? So now I know where my vertex is. Um, and I'm only graphing this between zero and eight. So why don't we go ahead and so my time only has to go from 0 to 8. So why don't we set up our scale here? It looks like every other square we could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then I need to go up to 16. Do I have enough to do by 1s? I think so. You don't. You don't have to. As long as it's, uh, as long as you have identified, like you, for example, if you looked at your quiz yesterday. So these don't have any numbers. So you have to use the same scale unless you write that it's something else. Yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a dot at 416. There is my vertex. All right, let's plug in some other numbers. At three seconds, where would the height of my ball be? At what? Three seconds. Just plug in three for T. Fifteen. So remember, it's a parabola. Buy one, get one free. 
Yep, three comma fifteen. Let's plug in two seconds. What would you get out? Twelve. twelve. So two, twelve. And we can buy one, get one free. Plug in one real quick. What do you get? Seven. seven. Yep. One, seven. So that's the same as seven, seven. And then plug in zero and you get out zero, which makes sense because at time zero, I haven't even thrown the ball yet. And that looks like it comes back to the ground at eight seconds. So we can connect this with a nice smooth curve. So here is this ball, gets thrown in the air, and there is the path that it takes. Now I could answer tons of questions about this, especially with the graph right in front of me. So what's the maximum height of the ball? 16. Where is the maximum height always gonna happen? At the vertex, right? So if you know the vertex, Here's what a lot of kids mess up on though. So the, our vertex was at four comma 16, right? I'm going to be asking you eventually how high did the ball ever go? And I, so many kids are gonna say four. But what's four mean? That's how long it took for it to get to the vertex. So always remember that your X value is time and your Y value is height. Okay, it's easy to answer the question with the graph right in front of me, but you're not gonna graph it every single time. So, uh, this pen's dying. 16 feet is the highest this ball ever gets. And do you see that you could get that answer without graphing it? You would just do the math to find the vertex. Okay, but now part B, it's very nice to answer this question with a graph right in front of us. What is the amount of time that the ball is above seven meters? So take a look at your graph and see if you can come up with Well, let's see. Seven sec or seven meters. Oh, I'm sorry, this is in meters, not feet, whatever. Did you do the same scale that I did? I guess not. <laughs> so seven meters happens right here. So how long is my, my, the ball above? One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, looks like six seconds from one to seven seconds. So that's a six second window that it is above seven meters. Does that make sense? So six seconds. Yeah, I counted my graph by one, so would that still be right? It's right, it's just, Short. yeah. Seconds. Six. six, yep, sorry. Like how much you wanna space it out? I usually you want to use up as much of the grid as possible. So if I if you only counted by eight, you would have stopped right here, you know, it'd be too squished. And then I realized, hey, look, if I just double it, I can space it out more. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the third example because this one's a little bit different now. A swim team member performs a dive from a 14 foot high springboard. The parabola below shows the path of her dive. So this person did not start on the ground. They're already starting 14 feet up. So they're going to jump off the board and then land in the water. Does that make sense? This time also, they, the x-axis is not time. They went distance away from the springboard. That's interesting. Okay, so they want to know in part A, what's the axis of symmetry? Yeah, isn't it? So the axis of symmetry, remember, runs right through my vertex. 
So what do I write on this line for A? X equals 3. You have to write X equals for A, an axis of symmetry equation. What's this? What's that even mean? F parenthesis 6. Correct. That means that you are, this notation, function notation, means that you're going to plug in 6 for x. So if I go to 6 on my x-axis, what do I get out? Looks like, ooh. Yeah, it looks like that would be right at 14. Does that make sense? Have you guys seen function notation before? Have we done it in here? I don't remember. You've like kind of touched on it. I can never remember. Yeah. Okay, so I actually want to jump now to, yeah, let's take a look at the very next page. And number one here. You're going to have a quiz probably tomorrow Are you yes that's and I think it's only what it's like literally just like this number one so it's like one question long so notice here I'm not making the graph I'm not graphing this I'm gonna answer all these questions without graphing it think we can